Okay, everybody, let's talk about the last three word problems. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about 98 and 99, which are very similar in the way they're solved to problem number 97 as well. So when you're looking at this video, you can think of this sort of an explanation for 97, 98, and or 99. Now, we're going to go through 98 and 99 together so you can see how this works. So we have two people who are traveling on trips, Ryan and Gabriella. So anytime I have two different people or two different situations, like in 97, we've got a plane that's going to Las Vegas and a plane that's the kind of same plane's coming back. Uh, in 99, we have like these different mixtures of nickel. I like to do this with a chart. So we have distances that are being covered in this problem, we have rates, we have speeds, and we have times. So the basic relationship you need to remember from, I don't know, sixth grade science, eighth grade science, is that distance equals rate times time, or distance equals speed times time. So I'm gonna write a chart here. And I'm gonna have stuff for Ryan and stuff for Gabriella. And since we have distances, rates, and times, I'm going to write D, R, and T. And then I'm going to read through the problem and see what I need to find. So when I read the problem, the first thing I notice is find Ryan's average speed. So we want his speed. That's his rate. So I'm going to write X as Ryan's rate. And I'm going to be trying to solve for X. So I'm going to read through the problem now and place information in the appropriate spot. So we have Ryan left the Science Museum and drove south. Gabriella left the Science Museum three hours later. So if we think of Ryan leaving at a certain amount of time and Gabriella leaves three hours later, Ryan's time traveling is always going to be three hours more than Gabriella's because he had a three hour head start. So what I'm going to do is say if Gabriella's time is T, Ryan's time is going to be three bigger than that. Now you do have the option of making Ryan's time t, but then Gabriella's would be t minus three, three less than Ryan's. And then it says that Gabriella drove 42 kilometers per hour faster than Ryan. Well, Ryan's speed was x. So Gabriella's speed is 42 more than x. And then it says after two hours, Gabriella finally caught up. So when time for, now it's two hours after Gabriella started traveling, right? And my T is Gabriella's time. So when T is two, when she's been traveling for two hours, the distances for Gabriella and Ryan are the same. They're caught up with each other. So if I write expressions for Ryan's distance, which is x times t plus 3, and Gabriella's distance, which is x plus 42 times t, when time is 2, those are equal to each other. So when t is 2, These are equal to each other. Now I have an equation that has only one variable in it, and I can solve. Oops, <laughs> got a little ahead of myself there. And now it won't let me erase. There we go. Nope. Well, it won't let me erase, so I'll just scratch it out. It's supposed to be 48. Now it's 16. So Ryan's average speed was 16 kilometers per hour. So let's talk about number 99. Now in number 99, we have three different types of metal that we're working with. One that contains 45% nickel, one that contains pure nickel, and one that contains 70% nickel. So I'm gonna make a chart again, kind of like I did for the previous problem. We got 45% nickel, we got pure nickel, and we have 78% nickel. Now, 
within this problem, we have milligrams of an alloy, basically the metal with some mixture of metals in it. Um, and then we have the amount of nickel. So I'm going to write up here the amount of that metal. And then here I'm going to write the amount of nickel. Now, you're told that you're looking for how many milligrams of a metal containing 45% nickel. So we're looking for how many milligrams of 45%. So we're going to call that X. Must be combined with 6 milligrams of pure nickel. So 6 milligrams of pure nickel, nickel to form an alloy containing 78%. So if we're adding X grams, sorry, milligrams, to 6 milligrams, then the 78% would have X plus 6 milligrams. So in this chart, when we're adding things, these two top things, when we add them together, are going to make the resulting stuff. Now, when we look at the amount of nickel, 45% of something, you can find that by multiplying it by 0.45, changing the percent to a decimal, and then multiplying it by the amount. So the amount of nickel in the 45% would be 0.45, that's 45%, of the amount of metal, which is X. Pure nickel is 100% nickel, so that's going to be 100% of 6. I could write 1.00 times 6, but it's, and I will. <laughs> that's going to be 6. And then X plus 6 times 0.78 is the amount of nickel in the final mixture. Now, remember we said the first two rows get added together for the third row? So in the second column, the amount of nickel, 0.45x, which is the amount of nickel in the 45%, plus 6, which is the amount of nickel in the pure nickel, is going to equal 0.78 times x plus 6. So this is one where we don't really need this third column. We really only just need those two. And then I'm going to solve it by distributing. And let's see, I don't have my calculator on me, so I'll just do this by hand. And then I would go ahead and solve this out. Subtracting 4.68 from both sides, subtracting 0.45x from both sides. And when I divide both sides by 0.33, I'm going to get that x is 4. So I would need 4 milligrams of 45%. Now we're going to do number 100 in a different video because it's a different type of problem.